Hey, Dave Rother here, and in this video, I want to get emotional uh, about advertising and why uh, advertising, why emotion is so crucial to advertising. I'm going to break down some of the myths and some of the, the kind of misconceptions, I guess, about emotion and how it's actually useful and how, in fact, it could actually harm you. Uh, in your in your advertising endeavors, regards to your branding, regards to selling more of your product. So emotions are a really important thing when it comes to selling anything and when it comes to engagement online as well. There's a lot of crossovers in what we're talking about between uh, between direct response marketing, uh, which direct response is essentially a term for essentially all selling that goes on on the internet or the majority of selling that goes on in the internet where you're trying to get a direct response from somebody, so uh, that's kind of a, a one of one of the core concepts of essentially the, the elements of how we're going to get people to buy our stuff. The other element that we talk um, a lot about with Vara by Design is obviously virality as well, and um, one of these crossovers is emotion because emotion drives people to action. You know, there's this really core concept in in direct response marketing that or any kind of marketing that people buy emotionally and then rationalize later on. So it's if you, regards to going and going out and buying a fancy new sports car, then that's not a logical decision, right? You can't drive a sports car uh, any faster than in the UK. Was it like 70 or 80 miles per hour legally? You should probably know that as a driver. <laughs> but uh, regardless, you can't drive it to the the speeds and the potential that that actual machine has right so it's not like a logical decision in regards to what you're going to use that car for getting from point a to point b in reality it's an emotional decision right it's an emotional decision but driven by something that we've spoken about already in these videos which is hierarchy like how does this make me look how does this uh increase or reduce my uh my what's the word i'm looking for my status, right? So this is, it's a purely emotional purchase. People then rationalize it later on by saying, oh, well, you know, I, I really needed this to, to look good to my work colleagues. It raises my status and therefore, etc." There's lots of ways that we then rationalize later on. The brain is fantastically good at doing that. It's the same as well for clothing and maybe shoes uh, for the ladies, right? So you could go out and buy a really nice pair of shoes purely based on emotion and then rationalize very well to yourself later on that they were entirely rational purchase that they were required as a work shoe because the other work shoes when yada 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 you, you understand uh, what i mean so but essentially we buy emotionally we take action emotionally and then rationalize later on so it is a really important concept to understand in marketing but just to go a little bit further into that and talk about the emotions that actually drive people to action because there's two different types of emotion or there's two core uh, results that we get from different emotions, one of which is physiological sedation. So physical, physiological sedation is when uh, something, an emotion makes us feel relaxed, makes us feel subdued, makes us feel sedated, and therefore it makes us less likely to actually take action. That action might include sharing, that action might include buying, that action might include becoming a lead. So any of these emotions that, um, that trigger physiological sedation, we really want to avoid in our marketing for the most part. For any scenario that involves actually getting people to take action, we want to avoid putting them into a sedated state, right? So we want to go after emotions that create physiological arousal, which as jazzy as that sounds, that essentially means getting people more uh, hyped up, more likely to take action, more inspired, more, and you, you know, you can almost feel these emotions. They don't need too much explaining. It's stuff like excitement. It's stuff like awe. It's stuff, stuff like inspiration. It's stuff like anger. Stuff that puts the, kind of, um, uh, gets your blood flowing, you know, as opposed to something like sadness, which would make you feel sedate, which would make you less likely to take action. Um, there's various crossovers with this, like sadness might cross over into something like misjustice, but you know, misjustice um, in terms of content is something which drives action because people like talking about stuff and like getting behind the cause, etc. But essentially you have to kind of feel this one out for yourself and, and figure out what emotion is going to drive uh, your purpose at any one time. Now, to talk more practically about, and I like to put stuff into a practical framework so that anybody can really start to get an idea about how it works for themselves. So to talk more practically about what emotions you might start to use in your business, uh, in your marketing, then I want to talk about some of the most powerful ones. Now in terms of, uh, in terms of virality, in terms of um, viral videos, then one thing which most people think about first, of course, is humor. Because humor is something which drives um, a lot of engagement, a lot of shares. And we think, again, conceptually about why that is. 
really important to start to think conceptually about these kind of things. Like, why is it that people share humor? Well, people share stuff that they think represents them, right? So that we've spoken about in, in previous videos. People take ownership of content and then share it because they think it represents them. It's one of the first things that they have to do when it, when it comes to social currency. How does sharing this content make me look? And the reason that humorous content works so well is because it makes them look funny. It represents their sense of humor. They take ownership of their joke, of the joke, and uh, it's great making people laugh, right? It's fantastic. Like it's it's um, a nice thing to be able to do, and therefore people want to do it, and therefore humorous content generally gets shared uh, quite a lot. But that's not to say that humorous content is the only way to do it. That's not the, not not to say the only way to create any kind of engagement or viral uplift or anything like that online is to be funny. You don't necessarily need to be funny. The same happens with lots of other things. In fact, just as um, just as powerful as humor, if, if not more so, is awe. Awe is a huge emotion. If you can uh, trigger awe and inspiration in people. Then, um, then that can get huge viral uplift, really, really huge, and a huge engagement as well. Because, you know, naturally as humans, as much as, um, you know, a lot of us, especially here in the UK, a lot of people don't like to admit that um, our, our emotions all that much and, and our kind of endeavors in life, maybe more so now in recent years, but certainly it's not a very British thing to do. But for the most part, people want self-transcendence. People want to become better versions of themselves. People want to be able to go and travel and do exciting things and progress themselves. It's why the personal development industry is a multi-billion dollar industry, right? Because people will actively pay money, will, will invest in themselves to become better. That's great, right? But this is the reason that awe and inspiration and inspirational motivational quotes get so much attention online because it helps people represent themselves. It helps people remember that there's, there's a bigger course that they're, they're, they're working towards. Um, and it's a really, really powerful emotion to, to harness. So how would you start to harness something like awe in your business? So a really great way to do this is through customer stories. That's a fantastic way to do this, especially if you're a service-based business. If you provide like a finite uh, uh, benefit to a customer, that if they use your product or service, then uh, they, they have a, 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 a remarkable, you know, like a, a marked increase in their happiness, in their wealth, in their... Uh, health and whatever it is, then it's really great to show awe inspiring stories because then you can use your customer as that kind of vehicle to tell your story. So here's Joe Blogs. They came to us and they were having a terrible time with X. Immediately you've hooked people in. Damn, I got that problem too. Joe overcame the odds with our help. Uh, and obviously don't use this as a, a strict copy <laughs> right now. With our help, Joe uh, managed to transcend himself. He managed to get to the next step. He managed to create the life that he wanted. He managed to to do the things, travel, etc., whatever it was. Um, and isn't this a fantastic uh, situation that Joe's had for himself? The customer sees Joe's story, feels that all that inspiration, the self-transcendence, and associates that with your brand. So that's like a really simple um, concept of how you might start to, to incorporate something like awe into your advertising. It's, it's really very doable, you know? It's really very, if you start to think about these emotions and how you can tell stories start to see how all these concepts start to meld together, how you can tell stories that incite awe, that incite happiness, that incite, that incite uh, inspiration. And customer journeys are a really fantastic way to do that. Now, on a more practical sense, in terms of creating emotion in your advertising, uh, there's some, some things that people really overlook right now uh, online, and it's uh, I suppose it's easily done, but the most powerful way to inject emotion into anything is through music. Now, I am uh, originally a musician. I was actually trained really intensively as a classical violinist uh, as a kid, and I went went on to do um, a little bit of film music, and then ended up touring around Europe as a as a uh, as a rock a punk rock violinist. Actually, that's a whole story for another time. But um, all along the way, like I've been very involved in music from a very young age, so it's always sort of been uh, natural to me to, to uh, have this kind of connection with music and how it affects people emotionally. It was kind of like driven into me as a kid, right? But I think it's something which doesn't really occur to people all that much, uh, how powerful music actually is for uh, for driving emotion and how you can leverage this for your brand as well or for your, for your business, for your videos. Uh, it's super, super powerful, super powerful. If you think about um, any film that you saw recently you, you every single film 
that's ever been made pretty much well apart from okay so let's talk about silent movies okay so if you were to take a film like uh, Nosferatu I think that was the first uh, film that was ever showed on mass right uh, these these films didn't have music and therefore they'd have a guy or a girl sat at the front playing piano along to it now if you imagine Nosferatu played with some intense uh, uh, intense piano music you know very scary it has a completely different impact if you started to, to play uh, like the Benny Hill theme tune behind it right just I'll, I'll, I'll key this up in a video at some stage on the Borrowed Body Design channel you see exactly what I mean but it illustrates how differently the context is given uh, to, to something to your video to your content with different music behind it it has a huge huge effect like a massive effect now the thing that most people overlook is that there are huge stock libraries of very affordable music out there online right now. So there's huge stock libraries of like specifically emotionally engaging music. And like with anything online, it's ranked by uh, by popularity. So it's ranked by how effective it is, how many people bought it, etc. So the, cr the cream generally rises to the top. So you can take any piece of content that you've got, any video, and take um, and go to a stock audio library and grab some music, which is literally like a keyword search. Is if you were searching YouTube or Google, keyword search to find something that suits what you what you want to do, what you want to try and get across, even just the word of the emotion that you want to that you want to get, or inspiration, motivation. Find a track that suits you, sling it underneath your video, and bang, you've already created more emotion into it. So that emotion, just bringing it back round full circle, that emotion is like. Makes, me, makes people more likely to purchase, makes people more likely to share, makes people more likely to comment, take action, to engage. It guides people along and it basically, it, it, it sort of tells them subconsciously how to feel about your content and how to, and how to feel about your, um, uh, your brand and your videos. So crazy, crazy powerful just on, on music itself there, but hopefully that gives a little bit more concepts on exactly what emotions you should be uh, you should be looking to, to incite in your content to actually drive action. Go for those things that get people physiologically aroused. Go for those things which get people excited to take action. Go for those things which um, which make people more likely to actually take action and, and, and purchase your product. Mm.